It's clear that having a ruler is necessary. It's a matter of common sense. And since it's a matter of common sense, God has clearly thought about it, which is why you find these various leaders and rulers all over the world saying they have the right to rule based on their religion. They say they have the right to rule because they have been chosen by God himself, because he has made it clear in his scriptures that he alone chooses the ruler. And if we look into the book of Daniel, it states that he changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. And then if we turn to the book of Proverbs, it also says, by me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me princes rule and nobles, all who govern justly. But we know throughout history, it's not always those who govern who are just. There have been many unjust rulers as well. Just take Pharaoh at the time of Moses. And what about Nimrod, who did everything in his capacity to try and kill Abraham? And from the Holy Quran, we have, Say, O God, O Lord of the kingdom, you give kingdom to whom you will and take kingdom away from whom you will. And you bestow honor on whom you will and bring disgrace to whom you will. In your hand lies betterment of everyone. You are surely powerful over everything. Now, according to the Abrahamic faith, Adam was actually the first man of the human race. Yet when we look into other religions, such as Islam, we see clearly that he was also appointed as a caliph or ruler for the people. It's said in the Holy Quran, I'm creating a caliph over the people. So if we recognize this from Islam, we can clearly see that then when Adam eventually died, he must have made a way to recognize who would come after him, who would be the leader for mankind. So when we delve into it, we see that Adam left a will, a final testament, so that the people would recognize who to follow after him. So we know from Adam that his successor was supposed to be Abel, but Abel's brother Cain killed him in a fit of rage of envy and jealousy. And as a result of that, the successorship would need to pass down to someone else. Now Adam, in his wise and sensibility, recorded down in the will that his successor should be the next in line, which was his son, Seth. Now that will was presented to Seth, and he would then himself present that to the people so they would know in each and every time who was supposed to be their leader. And this happened with each and every prophet and messenger throughout history. So we see that in each and every age, all of the prophets and messengers would stand amongst the people and pull out that will and then expressively show where their name was written. And therefore the people knew who was their leader and who they should submit to in that age. But one second, is that method really safe? Is this way of identifying God's ruler actually a waterproof, ironclad way of doing things? In other words, can it really be that simple? On the other hand, if God himself, the glorious, mighty and exalted God is writing this document, this mystical message, then surely the ink he is writing it with has in it a miracle. And it does, because this will, this testament that belongs to the man from God has to be kept safe. The mystical supernatural hand of God himself is writing a document for us every time. It is protected from corruption and protected from being claimed by the wrong people. It is something God provides, a safe handle to him in exchange for the currency of faith. It's a matter of give and take. 